Hey everybody, well today I'm super excited to run through Deep Search from OpenAI. I haven't played with this product yet, but I have been looking forward to it coming out. Um, we've been, we do a huge amount of research here at Archeo. Um, new products, technology, opportunities. And so this will be really, really cool to play with. And so we haven't, uh, haven't even put a single prompt into this yet. But I did load one that I think will be pretty cool to test it with. Um, but we'll get into that first. So the idea with this new product is that this is set up with um, a lot of, the, I'll say, agent freedom in it. So it should be doing things like searching the web. It should have some reasoning in it. It should be thinking about the problem. And so expectations are be that it's actually going to take a little bit of time to get us back an answer. And we're also expecting to see pretty cool difference. And so I'll run the same prompt in 01 afterwards. And then we can kind of like compare and contrast the difference in the in the two outputs. So what I wanted to do today is actually look at, I've been thinking about this product, an AI executive assistant. And so really cool space as a CEO of two companies. I spent a lot of time trying to manage things like my inbox, my calendar, responding to emails. And I joke with the team lots of times that you almost get a little bit of a traumatic response to the amount of influx that comes into your inbox. So this was one that I wanted to play with and, and see if this was something that would actually be a good product. And so my prompt is a little bit of a description of the actual expectations for the product. And then I said, I want to know what the current market, if there's anything currently available in the market, if there's a need for the product, what would be the top sales channels as well as pricing model for this product? I didn't structure this prompt. I didn't give it a huge amount of information. I thought this would be a fair prompt that a lot of people will come up with without putting a huge amount of detail into it. So let's see how well it can reason and how well it can come up with just from this small amount of information. So I think it's going to take a little bit of time and we'll review through it. Once we're done this, what I want to do is actually go into the um, into open, sorry, uh, ones model and see how it reacts as well. So we already have some questions. So so are you interested in an executive that are software only? If so, okay. What are your global market analysis, folks, regions? Okay, so let's answer some questions. We are looking for is 80% software with some human interaction. We are looking at North America. And English, merely. And um, let's go small to medium, small to medium entrepreneurs. And uh, what else do we want? Would you like to see what it does for this? Yeah, okay, let's do it. Okay, so that's a that's a cool feature because obviously, usually you put in a prompt and it just kicks you out a out a output. So this is the first time it's actually like got in and asked. A specific question and so i think that's a pretty big leap to be honest because we've been talking about this at archeo the need for i'll say large language models to kind of like converse with you as a human being and to communicate back with you so that it actually feels a little bit more human in it interaction so that's a really cool feature to to have, and I think you're going to see this actually come out a lot more in AI first product design where where it becomes more and more humanistic in the interface and the way that it actually communicates and talks to you and asks questions. I was listening on a, to a podcast on a run the other day, and they were talking about how how important it is for AI agents and tools in the future to be able to clarify what you want. And I, I was thinking about that as a CEO and as as an employer and thinking about how many times you actually chat with one of your team members and communication breaks down because you didn't quite explain it well enough. Well, I think that's a phenomenon that we're going to see a lot with AI as well. So a big portion of how that can be overcome is by making sure that AIs are, are actually thinking about the question, like, okay, well, I need clarify, clarification instead of just trying to 
answer the question. So that'll be, I think, a big thing that we see transitioning into over the next little while. So this is pretty cool. So let's look at this. So right now we're looking at products, searching for AI solutions. So right now they have a couple here. Lindy's a good one. So we kind of looked at Lindy as well. That's a, that's a cool product. You it's mostly you have to build it though, if, if I remember correctly. So we'll definitely take a look at them afterwards. So you can automate your inbox. Again, that's cool. This is cool. Like going through Y Combinator, looking at Y Combinator's AI assistant tags. Actually, did you know that you have an AI that's named after you? <laughs> that's awesome. Very cool. I love that it's like pulling all this back together and like actually doing what would take you hours and hours and hours of research to be able to go out and gather this information. So I'm super, super excited to see how it actually, um, what it what it puts together out of all of this information. So what do we got? Okay, so we got search Topsy AI, maybe AI Assistant, Salesforce. So if you were actually to go through and try and gather this much information, I think this would be like an incredible amount of work. And it is doing this in, so we've been live for probably seven minutes and it has already got us this far into it. So this is very, very exciting to see how much it actually can do. And now you can see it's actually working on, okay, so how is Lindy charging? So 400 tax, tasks, at eight cents per task. Now all of a sudden you can see how it's coming together with a pricing model comparable to Lindy, um, which is really interesting. I gotta see, I'm gonna have to search over this and see um, magic because they're hourly or on retainer. So that would be pricing if I, if I, getting this right, I think that would be pricing against a um, virtual assistant, but I bet you that's a human. So that would be really cool. Oh, and it's actually going against like what pricing for a human would be. That's super cool. I'm going to tell you right now, these things are going to be absolutely incredible game changers for people that are trying to understand the challenges that they have in their companies. I can imagine every CEO is going to be on this in deep search, asking the questions that they would be paying consultants for, that they would be paying strategists for. And if they're not today, they will be very, very soon, I can tell you, or they're gonna be falling very far behind. Because when you can have this type of information and input into what you're trying to do and build, that's so, so powerful. And I actually was playing with Grok the other day, and I was surprised with its search functionality. So we're going to have to do one of those later as well. But, um, so this is going to continue working through. And as you can see, um takes a little bit of time. I do love that you can actually see the work that it's doing, because I think that's another part that we're going to really start to see as, as a big portion of the um UI and design of AI first products is being able to see the step-by-step -step working of, of what it's doing. And I think what that also does is gives you like a little bit more capacity for your product to take a while to actually bring an output back as well as it's really good to see how much compute and how much work actually is being done to get you the information that you ask for. So super cool. So we're going to let this run and then we'll jump back and we'll look at the actual response that we get. Okay. So let's take a look at what we got. 26 sources took 11 minutes. Go through and look at all the different sources, citations, but let's look and see what our report says. So this is an interesting one because I think that Lindy is more than just an AI assistant. It's actually does quite a bit more work but it's definitely built so that you can build automations. So Mave, cool. And for solopreneurs, Motion. This is like intelligent task scheduling. Microsoft Copilot, Google Workspace. Oh, they got Superhuman because that was one that I was really interested to see if they pulled up. Okay, market need and demand. So there's a strong need and growing demand for AI executive assistance among small and medium business owners, key drivers. Yeah, this is really right on where I thought it would be. So 50 to 70 K for that position. So that's really interesting. I'm, I want to see if that comes through in the pricing model 
Um, even part time, so you're looking at eleven hundred a month. Uh, AI solutions fifty to two hundred a month. Lindy, I love that it's got a nice SWOT in here. Content marketing and thought leadership. That's really strong. Product hunt, premium and viral loops. Yeah, this is what we want to see. Solopreneur, professional teams. I think this is interesting because I think it's way low, personally. I don't think if you're going to be creating a product that that's like a virtual assistant, if you price it at nineteen ninety nine, it's just not the the it's just too cheap for the sales motion that you're going to need. So you'd actually have to bring the pricing up probably to one ninety nine a month. So you need to figure out how you're going to actually price that so that you can show that as a um, show the value of that value based pricing. There we go. Startup plan twenty nine pro plan. 79 I think you're pricing it like an entrepreneur not like a, a salesperson cool well there you go that's the report and i think super super powerful and um i'm excited to hear in the comments what everyone else is using it for we'll be using it every single day here have an amazing day